Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. The good news of Easter is not that Jesus lived and died, but that Jesus died and lives, and he will return again. Let's share the text that's printed for us in our bulletin this morning. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. On September the 11th, 2001, 343 firefighters and paramedics, as well as 60 police officers in the New York Police Department and the Port Authority were murdered in the World Trade Center when those tower, tires came down. Not one of those brave souls intended to give their lives trying to put out a fire or save a building. If those in authority had any idea that those structures were going to collapse, they would have without hesitation ordered everybody out. A fireman may die at a fire, but dying wasn't part of his job description. Yes, a police officer may die in the line of duty, but that was never the intent. A lifeguard may be killed in a rescue operation, but he doesn't go out with the idea of giving up his life. People don't die for their job. When I read this passage, listening to the words of Jesus, when he said, I am the good shepherd, I know my sheep, I wondered how I overlooked one phrase. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. He said it four times, and I missed it. Nobody dies for their job. Is there anything which can make a lamb, no matter how cute it is, worth the life of a shepherd? <clears throat> the answer is, of course not. Bowlers don't die for their bowling balls. And golfers don't die for their drivers. And painters don't drive for their brushers. Insurance salesmen don't, dry, don't die for their accounts. And organists don't die for their organs. And shepherds should not die for their sheep. Yet Jesus, the good shepherd, does just that. When our sons were in 4-H, we raised sheep as one of their 4-H projects. It was work getting 14 head of sheep ready for the fair. They had to be washed with special soap. And then they had to be kept clean for a number of days until the fair started. They had to be trimmed. That worked out to about three or four hours per sheep. Just to make them look nice for the fair. Do you think those sheep thanked me? <laughs> they simply, sheep simply are not appreciative. And I guarantee you the sheep are not going to give me an award on Shepherd's Day. Sheep may not even realize they have a shepherd on duty caring for them. Shepherds don't die for their sheep. Jesus said, I'm not a hard hand. But when danger comes, when the wolves threaten the flock, the hard hand runs away. No, I am the good shepherd. I am the gate and I willingly lay down my life for my sheep. That's what Jesus was born to do. Go with the shepherds of Bethlehem and look into the manger and you will see a cute, cuddly child but long ago, Jesus' job and his ending had been foretold by the prophets and the Psalms. <clears throat> From his birth, Jesus was a designated good shepherd. And when Jesus walked the earth, most of the sheep he encountered didn't thank him. When he healed ten lepers, how many came back? Nine forgot to show appreciation. His boyhood friends and neighbors didn't give him keys to the city of Nazareth. They wanted to throw him off a cliff. The pillars of the religious community never gave the Savior applause or accolades for healing hundreds of people or raising the little boy from the village of Nain from the dead. The best they could do was call him names and challenge him about who he was and called his disciples, said that they failed to respect the Jewish laws written in the Old Testament. They refused to give him a classroom in the temple and encourage him to share the wisdom of God. If he challenged their own failures to keep the Old Testament, well, they would just substitute man-made rules as, well, these are just as important. When Jesus came into the world to save his sheep from sin and death and judgment, he came because it was a commandment from his Father in heaven. 
The commandment was that he should die for sinners and rise again. And with the commandment came the authority to take it up again. He said, I have the authority to lay down my life and I have the authority to take it up again. This passage in John, our gospel lesson, is based on God's promise in Ezekiel chapter 34. Now, why don't you take out your Bibles and you can go there and look at Ezekiel 34. Sort of in the middle to the back of the Old Testament. I have my mark, so it's easier for me this morning. But if you can find it, we've been talking about uh, over the last couple of weeks, especially last week, uh, when Jesus was at uh, Emmaus with the disciples at, on Emmaus, and all of a sudden there was this little phrase, he opened their mind uh, to discover the scriptures. And then again on the resurrection evening, he opened the mind of the disciples to understand the scriptures. And this is one of those passages. So look at Ezekiel 34, 34 verse 1. The word of the Lord came to me, said, Son of man, prophesy against the shepherds of Israel. Prophesy and say to them, This is what the sovereign Lord says. Woe to the shepherds of Israel who only take care of themselves. Should not shepherds take care of the flock? So who's speaking? The Lord. The Lord is speaking through Ezekiel. Okay, look at, uh, look at verse uh, 7. You shepherds, hear the word of the Lord. As surely I live, declares the sovereign Lord, because my flock lacks a shepherd, and so has been plundered. Boy, I'm having trouble this morning, huh? Plundered, and has become food for all wild animals. And because my shepherds did not search for my flock, but cared for themselves, bury them for my flock. Therefore, shepherds, hear the word of the Lord. I am against the shepherds. Or verse 11. This is what the Sovereign Lord says. I myself will search for my sheep and look after them. In 12b, I will rescue them from all the places where they are scattered on the day of clouds and darkness. I'll bring them out from the nations. Verse 16, I'll search for the lost and bring back the strays. I'll bind up the injured and strengthen the weak and I will shepherd the flock with justice. God himself came as the good shepherd. What were the words that God told Ezekiel to speak? I, the sovereign Lord, will judge the religious leaders because they had not strengthened the weak. They had not healed the sick. They did not bring back the strays or search for the lost. It was Jesus who sought out Zacchaeus, the blind beggar, the Samaritan woman at the well. The Pharisees ruled harshly. They were willing to stone the woman caught in adultery. But where was the guilty man? I, the sovereign Lord, will remove the shepherds from tending my flock, and I myself will rescue them. I myself will search for the lost. I will bind up those who are injured. In this text, Jesus said, He who is a hired hand and not a shepherd, he who is not the owner of the sheep, runs away when the wolf comes. And when the wolf comes, he will snatch the sheep. And he will scatter them. The hired hand flees because he's a hired hand and he's not concerned about the sheep. To the hired hand, sheep tending is just a job. They are doing this to earn a living, not because they love the sheep. And so they say, no job is worth my life. And they run away. So if you're just working for a living, then you surely don't need to get a job that might kill you. So if a pack of wolves attacks your sheep, you're just a hired hand, you run. You don't risk your life and fight the wolves. Who cares about a few sheep? The reason Jesus mentions these hired hands is to show that he's not like that. He is not a hired hand. He is a good shepherd. He's the owner of the sheep. He said, I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me. The difference is that a hired hand loves his life more than he loves a sheep. But Jesus loves a sheep more than his life. Four times in this passage, Jesus says, I lay down my life for my sheep. Verse 11, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. Verse 15, I lay down my life for the sheep. Verse 17, for this reason, the father loves me because I lay down my life. Verse 18, no one has taken my life away from me, but I lay it down on my own initiative and I have the authority to take it up again. There are three wolves I want to talk about. 
The three wolves. Well, who are they? What are they? But these three wolves is what Jesus lays his life down to save us from. First, there is the wolf of sin. Jesus says, the Lamb of God takes away the sin of the world. Those were spoken by John the Baptist about Jesus when he was being baptized. Behold the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. Sin is a wolf that destroys the world and cuts us off from God and alienates us from one another. Jesus came into the world to draw the wolf of sin onto himself and off of the world and to die in the place of his sheep. When the good shepherd sacrifices himself for the flock, he becomes like the lamb and bears the sin of many. The second and third wolf Wolves are death and divine judgment. Death is a great destroyer. It will attack and destroy everyone, great and small, rich or poor, men and women, every race, every creed. It is a fearful wolf. After death comes judgment. Hebrews says, it is appointed to man to die once and after that face of judgment. Death does not destroy by ending what we had planned in this life and then leading us into sort of nothingness. It destroys by ending what we had planned in this life and leading us into the courtroom of the God Almighty, whose law we have broken, whose glory we have despised. Jesus lays down his life to destroy all three. Hebrews 9, just as human beings are destined to die once and after that face judgment, so Jesus Christ was sacrificed once on the cross to take away the sins of many people and he will appear a second time not to bear sin but to bring salvation to those waiting for him. Jesus said, I tell you the truth. He who believes in me has everlasting life, for I am the resurrection and the life. He went on to say, I have other sheep which are not of this fold. I must bring them in also, so they will hear my voice, and they shall become one flock and one shepherd. And that's why Jesus talked to the woman at the well. This is why you and I talk to our unchurched friends. We don't always invite them to church because it's not always appropriate but we listen to their concerns and we're there to answer their questions because we know the Holy Spirit's at work in their life. Jesus didn't come into the world to lay down his life only for a few few Jewish disciples in Palestine. He has other sheep that are not of this fold. His sheep in Antioch and Athens and Rome, London, New York, Mexico City, Sydney, Singapore, Beijing, Central Valley. When Jesus was crucified on Golgotha, he was in control. He willingly gave up his life because he loves his sheep. He died in unjust circumstances, no doubt, in great pain, because his father was keeping his promise to Adam and Eve that he would send a substitute. This is what the Sovereign Lord says. Woe to the shepherds of Israel. They only take care of themselves. Should not shepherds take care of the flock? You clothe yourself with wool and slaughter the choicest animals for yourselves. You see, Jesus knew that passage from Ezekiel 34. And this is what he said to the Pharisees when he was thinking about that passage in Ezekiel 34. The Pharisees will tie up heavy loads and put them on men's shoulders, but they themselves are not willing to lift a finger to help the poor. Everything they do is done for men to see. They make their phylacteries wide and their tassels on their garments long. Woe to you hypocrites, you shut the gate to the kingdom of heaven. Ezekiel because my flock lacks a shepherd for they did not search for the lost but cared for themselves therefore I will remove them I myself will search for my sheep you better believe the Pharisees knew that they knew that passage in Ezekiel 34 and they knew Jesus was talking about himself that's why Jesus continued to say I am the gate and whoever enters through me will be saved I am the good shepherd. I lay down my life for you, my sheep. I lay it down, but I will take it up again. It was not Pilate who took his life from him. It wasn't the Pharisees. Jesus said, I lay my life down of my own accord, and I have the authority to take it up again. That's why the tomb of Joseph of Arimathea, which held the crucified body of Jesus, was in which he was placed and sealed, was empty on Easter morning. May the Holy Spirit continue to open our minds to see Jesus when we read His Word. Amen. And now may the peace of God which surpasses all of our understanding keep your hearts and minds growing in
the Word and in the knowledge of His Word. Amen. We continue our order of worship. We confess together the words of the Nicene Creed. It's in your hymnal on the very back page. So if you take out your hymnal, turn to the very back page, we'll confess together the Nicene Creed. Let us stand. I believe in one God, Father. 